to another episode of Coffee Interviewed. I am your host, Coffee Iman, and today I have Marcus Murphy, who's going to first tell us a little bit about himself before we get started. Okay, well, my name is Marcus Murphy. I'm from Washington, D.C., born and raised. Um, I got my degree from the University of District of Columbia um, in political science, and I plan on going to Emory Law School in a few years um, to get my degree in um, with my law degree in um, entertainment law okay so you jump from there to being an actor tell us how that transition mm-hmm. started mm-hmm. so yeah so, so I, I still love acting um i started my career as a print model um for the k2 zombie and um as it pertains to like synthetic marijuana it was shown in new york Times square and the modeling actually opened the doors for um for acting but education is always like my first love and um, in order for me to always do things that keep me um, going forward, um, I feel like if I'm not in front of the screen or behind the screen, I definitely want to be um, a lawyer so I can give advice to my peers and um, also people that want to enter the industry someday. So do you prefer to do film and acting or stage acting? Uh, I prefer film acting okay. because, you know, the different takes and then you can just, it's long days for sure. But it's like three months compared to like stage acting. Granted, stage acting is cool too. Don't get me wrong, because sometimes you got to do like ad libbing or be crooking your toes. But it's just so long, so you don't have the abilities to do like film work. But with film, you can have a better schedule with what you want to do. Now I see that you dabbled in also doing some writing. You went to school for writing as well. Um, so not for college, but in high school I did. Okay, and I wrote my first play. Um, actually for the Shakespeare Theater, if I'm not mistaken, back in high school for a writing class that I took and they performed my play there. So it gave me like the motivation and the, the courage to know I, I could do it um, when I was like 14 um, and I did it. Now, have you done any short films recently or what are your projects mainly? Just um, mm-hmm. either behind the scenes or in front of the camera? Um, so actually I do more like in front of the screen, but I have been dabbling a little bit more behind um, but currently, though, I, I am preparing for my first feature film that I'm working on um, called Greed and Loyalty. So that'd be filming in Washington, D.C. and North Carolina. Um, it's okay. kind of like a mix of um, Minister Society, like the Rand's Tate. But like a okay. piece of, yeah, yeah. So I'm looking forward to it. And then um, I'm also starring in it, too, and being behind the camera work. So I'm looking forward to that. So most of my time is that. Um, I just came back from Atlanta um, last week working um as technical director for a play um called when boys exhale so it was like the male version of when to exhale but okay. the message was basically about like hiv and aids and um, all that stuff so it was you really performed good. in this or you was working with this i was working with it okay no, i was working yeah so, so yeah. back to this law degree that you are searching for um, <laughs> So you got the degree in political science. Tell me why that you started to do that versus just going into acting school. Yeah. So um, like I was, like I mentioned earlier, you know, education is something I've always been drilled upon. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, and I love learning. And I also love um, acting school, too. Um, my acting coach is Kelsey Colley. He um, taught at the um, illustrious Howard University. So he taught like Gerald B. Henson and Anthony Anderson. And um, for me, even though I love acting and I'm, I've been very supported in my career by some great people, um, I always just want to not just put my eggs in one basket. And um, having my law degree will allow me different opportunities. So if I ever want to not do acting someday, I can have something to fall back on. And are law, you currently in a position to practice law, or you just or are you going to law school in the future? Law school in the future. So I'm in the LSAT classes now. Um, and all that good stuff. I just completed my paralegal certification um, about a, okay. two months ago. So that was hard, but it gave me just like the, the, I guess like the little nugget to know when I go to law school, what you prepare versus me just getting my political science degree and then jumping in law school. And I probably would say forget it because it was too much. Had, <laughs> no, for real. I promise you. I promise you. But having my certification and going through that um, class gave me some, some tools that I can really um, take with me to law school when i go okay so where do you see yourself i would say like five years from now if you're not doing film is that just law or do you have like one thing set in mind as far as your acting career so what i plan on doing you know um as far as acting goes once i get my law degree 
I definitely want to have like my own entertainment like um, agency. So it will be like, you know, law and then also still dealing and dabbling in like behind the scenes and also acting and giving like young creative black people specifically the opportunities um, coming up in the game, whether that's feature film, short film, commercials, um, people who still want to do school, but they feel like, you know, they might not want to do it at the moment. So they can do like entertainment stuff and then they don't want to go back and have that conversation too. So that's my goal, really just um, create opportunities for people that look like me. Okay. Now coming out of DC, what were some of your inspirations in following this career path? You know, to be honest with you, I mean, I'm going to start uh who am i inspired by so sydney portier really is like my greatest inspiration not so much some anybody in dc but just sydney portier you know what he stood for but as i've gotten older and then seeing different people that come from dc area um black people of such um that's coming up right now um i'm a huge um to watch the Henson fan, um, you know, being that she's from the south side of dc uh, where i grew up at and then like her story um, people that's not from D.C., but who went to school here, like Anthony Anderson, the late Chad with Barsman, um, Paulie J. Parker. So those are people who I like, I like to look at, I'm inspired by, and I plan on, um, you know, one day working with them. What, now, what genre of film are, do you gravitate towards? Do you see us I, doing any thrillers or? <laughs> no, I like, I, like, I like drama, and okay. I also like the thrillers, I mean, thrillers as well. Um, drama is cool. But depending on like what I'm working on, I gotta sometimes scale back, you know, because it can be just emotional and heavy for me. Like I did a play before called um, "Until the Flood," and that was written by Dale Orlando Smith, and it was about based off Michael Brown's story. And I really did love the content, but it was just so heavy and so emotional that when we was done with that play, <laughs> it was it was time to just take a break and get some you know, some comedy relief. And if I was a comedian, I definitely would have dived in that, but. <laughs> I like. I promise you, I'm gonna dive in that. But call me a thriller for sure. Okay. Well, when you want to do the projects, you say you're gonna do some projects in the future. Of your own. Are you your future? Your feature film. What genre is that one in? So that is like a, a drama slash. Um, it's a drama feature. Um, okay. Film. Mm -hmm. But the project I want to work on in the future is kind of like um, Canada Lee. Um, he was a boxer turned actor back um, in like the 1950s and 40s. And um, I'm actually working out a lot with this trainer now. So I want to do the research and all that good stuff. So I do plan on doing his story in the next couple of years, actually. I'm doing the research now, but it, I, I'm looking you writing to his, Are you writing this or you want to perform it? Is this something you're auditioning for? Oh, no, I'm writing it. I'm not writing it. And I want to star in it. And I want to make sure I give it the best ability and the light that it deserves because so many black actors he actually even though i love Sidney portier he actually is like one of the first black people um who we should be accredited for like the, the black rose and the strong rose other than Sidney portier but i love him too though but, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i did not get that yeah mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> interesting um if you could have any role i guess that was out previous what would have been your dream role to have my dream role my dream role to have really would have been part of Jordan Peele, the movie Nope. Uh, I know, like, no, for real, we should have been an all black cast. Like, I know he like to, you know, dib and dab with the, the white characters, but I think Nope would have been so good. Um, and just his writing abilities and how he brings a message across. I would have loved to have been a part of that for sure. Now, do you think um, it's important to have all black cast, or what is your take on that? I think it's important to um, have an all black cast. I think oftentimes, you know, we don't really get great roles when they are available. So when the opportunity do come, you know, and it's and it's major, you should like you should be able to have an all black cast because you can learn from one another. Um, you understand each other better when it comes to just being like on the set together, um, conversations, all that good stuff. Because again, you may not get work for some time and but the good thing is you know we're in an era now where you can create your own content and all that stuff whether it's independent or not but i think having a black cast really should solidify like like the best man you know the first best man not the best <laughs> man too, but the first best man black cast you felt the chemistry you felt the love amongst one another they was all doing something because they knew it would be great so you were speaking about I'm having an all black cast. Now, what about this thing about production? Is it hard to work behind the scenes um, when it comes to finding those opportunities as well, being um, a black writer or part of a production team? 
you know, it, it can be because, you know, sometimes they have people they already want to work with anyway. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't go to film school for or you don't have like a resume, they don't want to give you the opportunity. So they want you to come with something. But then in some cases, you know, you have people who take a chance on you. Like I never did technical directing at all. But the gentleman who I went down to Atlanta with for his play, when Boys Exhale, his name is Anthony Green, by the way, from Memphis, Tennessee, gave me the opportunity because we were together on a previous film called The Souls of Black Pebbles. And that was like a political, social, thriller, horror film. Okay. Um, and that was an amazing experience for me as well. So I guess he liked my work on that. He just felt like, okay, well, I want to keep the team that I have and are you available? So he was actually the first person to give me that opportunity to... Okay. um to work behind the scenes and, and do it graciously. And um, I learned a lot. So I want to do more of it to perfect it, you know. So how do you feel someone should should pivot when it comes to that? You don't have a resume. Mm -hmm. You don't have any <laughs> schooling for it, but you just have like what you think is a natural gift. So what mm -hmm. advice would you give someone who's trying to just jump in? Yeah, my advice would be, you know, if you don't think school is for you for that particular skill, mm -hmm. then it's important that you do go to like different um, trainings or even workshops or even be around friends that's doing it currently or that's in school for it and to learn from them. So if the opportunity do present itself to you, then you have some knowledge of it. And if you like it, of course, you know, learn as much as you can. And if you don't, at least you say it was a check off your bucket list, but just don't dive into it. Like we're acting, you know, I like what I was doing, so I had like an acting coach, but I would never just go into a set thinking, oh, this is me, and I, I'm, I'm gonna talk like me. No, like I wanna know the language, I wanna know my um, strength, I wanna know my weaknesses, I wanna be able to cry on cue, I wanna be able to, you know, be able to deliver, because that's what they want the most to deliver. Now, this is one thing creatives might want to know why have a plan B mm -hmm. when you said I have to have a backup plan and I have to study law? Why isn't law your plan A, or why haven't you? put all why why haven't you put everything in one basket and say hey i just have to do this mm -hmm. and this is just because i have to manifest it so why <laughs> have you choked why have you i mean everybody has yeah really has a plan b mm -hmm. but you know it's always a question with creators because they're like well i have to do this 100 percent in order to get the results i want so yeah. why have you decided to choose a plan b yeah, I decided to choose a plan B because, one, when I did go with plan A, you know, I was maybe a teenager when I started in my career. And I remember at one point, you know, when the work was coming, it was coming so much that I didn't think I needed a plan B because it was never my thought. Right. But when the work started to slow down for me and I was like this depression mode at one point, I was like, you know, am I good enough? Am I no longer good enough? What happened to that, that fire that I once had? And instead of, and then I started going to therapy, really, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And during my therapy session, you know, we would have like different conversations. And I was like, you know, my first love was writing, was education. And then during our session, you know, it took me back to, okay, what makes me happy writing? So, and going to school and then getting my degree just gave me more of the encouragement to say, okay, I want to go to law school someday. Because even though entertainment will always be a love and a thrill for me, it's also important for me to instead of paying paying like these lawyers and all these things, why not have the knowledge base for myself? So then when I give people the opportunity that somebody gave me someone that you know when I was coming up, they can have that platform already now to get, you know, tossed around in circles. So that's really why I got the plan B. So okay. it's not so much just for me, but it's for the ones that's coming up behind me too in this industry and not and not getting played with, to be honest with you. <laughs> Now, being an entrepreneur, I guess, quote unquote, because you mm -hmm. have done your individual projects, mm -hmm. what is in store for the future? Would you pivot out of acting at one point and decide to just start a business because you do have that knowledge with law or what what do you see yourself doing? So I definitely do want to do like the business side of it um, in the future, but I want to make sure I have a ground base and, and, and solidified for um, upcoming talent and to make their they name and they way in the industry as well, um, for sure. And, and really, and, and guide them too, you know, on a, on a white journey, you know, um, not take their money or, you know, they didn't, they didn't do every project, but to really just make sure whatever content that you want to do, remember, it might be a job and money might be good for at that moment, but you still are a human being in the day and whatever you put on screen is forever. So yeah, it's been, it's been mindful. Yeah, just being mindful. So that's really like my go-to. And I think, you know, being a black man and wanting to give opportunities to black people, both men and women, 
it's good that I have the knowledge base so they don't get um you know tossed around and stuff. Okay. Well, where can my listeners find you and show support? Yeah, so you can find me on Twitter at Superman Mark. So that's in Superman M A R C Mark. You can find me on um, Instagram, Hollywood Devon. And then you can find me on Facebook at Marcus Devon. That's my middle name, Devon. So I'm going to use okay. that more. So they got to find three different people. <laughs> three different people. <laughs> but, it's all, but, but, but I'm born Marcus Murphy, though. I'm born Marcus okay, Murphy. Okay, got it. Got it. <laughs> Do you have a website they can visit as well or anywhere to vi- to see any films or productions you've been in? Yeah, so um, I don't have my website up as of yet. Um, that's in the process now. I had to revamp some things. And then as far as the project goes, um, I'm waiting like for like a list of all the stuff to come out. But I do have a movie that's in film festivals now that I was a part of okay. called um, American Gone. American Gone Wrong, and it's like political justice film, and it's supposed to be they're in San Diego right now at the film festival, the um, brothers, the Shelton brothers, and then they also have the same film um, premiering in Harlem, New York, uh, May 7th. May 7th. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, congrats on that. Thank you. Um, if you guys are visiting film festivals this season, shoot out and see the film American Gone Wrong. Mm-hmm. You will find Marcus Murphy. Do you have a character name or you just... In oh, a- yes. No extra work. I did, that. <laughs> I did the extra work earlier in my career, but uh, my character, his name is um, Ram, and um, I think you'll be surprised what you see. I just okay. say that. Mm-hmm. Well, congrats and good luck with everything. We look forward to seeing the projects you're creating in the future, especially the play you just got done um, working on. Um, also, make sure you guys follow him at Hollywood Devon, right? On Instagram. Yeah. On Instagram. And Mark on Twitter. And Marcus Devon on Facebook. Yep. Gotcha. <laughs> he got four we different names. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you joining us today. Like I said, just take a moment of your time, introduce you to my listeners and to my viewers. And I appreciate you showing support. Let's show Marcus Murphy support back by following him and checking out his projects. And good luck. Hopefully you get into um, Emory as well because education is important. So we're going to keep Fred lifted up for you for that. Um, anything you'd like to say to those listening that may be following you already? Um, it's this quote that I live by um, by Aristotle. It's called, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but it's a habit. So whatever you want to do, work hard at it. And remember the habits that you create ultimately be your ultimate goal in the future, whatever you want to do. Well, thank you for shedding mm-hmm. that light on us today. Yeah. Um, again, thanks. Can't thank you enough for taking time. I know we were like playing time tag. <laughs> 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 we got it together. It's like, we got it together. <laughs> thanks again. Have a wonderful day. Um, can't wait to see what you have in store. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.